Okay, so right now we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to track a shadow. It's a motion tracking tutorial. Import my file. Shadow test. And drop it down on my timeline. Throw on a null object. I want to make it green because I like fun stuff. Shadow test. I track its motion. And we want to track the fingertip. We want to track the point that has the most contrast between itself and the background. And I think the finger here might be one of the better ideas. This uh, this X right here in the middle is your anchor point. It's supposed to be anchoring onto that specific pixel that's underneath it, or pixels. This inner inside box right here is the memory that it wants to find. Like the pixels here, this is what it's going to try to look for uh, on every frame. And this box right here is where it's going to look for those pixels. So it might have an issue down here, but maybe not because of the point. That's why we want to have a good amount of different colored pixels that are very specific so it, the computer won't have too hard of a problem trying to find it. And we're going to go ahead, make sure motion source, this is going to be a shadow test. Want to make sure motion target for null one, which is our null object here. It's exactly what we want. I'm going to go ahead and analyze. It's going to let the computer think, do its job. Okay, our tracker slipped somewhere. Now we have to but right there is where it started to slip. Now sometimes we have to do this one frame at a time to make sure that everything stays where it's supposed to be. Sometimes it works better that way for some weird reason. That was probably a bad move. Nancy. It was. Okay. And you kind of can see like underneath it, like the the boxes underneath it are starting to kind of move from where it used to be. Kind of looks like it might be a little bit off, but I can't really tell. Nope. No, it's sticking good. It just uh, got away from itself whenever it did the live, the actual render, or the, uh, the analyze. So right now it seems to be working out a lot better. Even though it's not necessarily perfect. But it's tracking to it nonetheless. Yeah, I know this is slipping, but so it's not the perfect render. You may have to go back and readjust it, but uh, I'm not going to because this is uh, 
you know, just a tutorial to kind of give you a heads up and kind of a rundown of what's going on with this. And it's completely up to you if you want to go back to this and readjust it. I'm not. But for tutorial reasons, I'm just showing you how to track. Oh, yeah, that's way too bad. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know why it decided to do that. Come on. And just as I had mentioned earlier, I thought it might have a problem, you know, trying to slide down the uh, finger there, which I was actually right. So, that point probably wasn't the best one to stick to, because there wasn't enough contrast. But for this tutorial, it's gonna be it's gonna be okay. Now I'm gonna move this up now, and so you're gonna see a big nasty jolt whenever this whenever we actually track something to it, since it wants to play hardball. Now I gotta track to the tip of the finger again. Woo. Stop it right there. I'm going to show just double check, make sure. Okay, looks fair. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply, go ahead and apply this to the null object. See, so we got our track points down here. I actually went a little bit further, so I guess I could. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Got the uh, got that going. Got our track here. So now this I think is useless. I'm going to track something to it now. I'm going to go to a solid. No, I'm not. <clears throat> solid object. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make a really nice hot red there. I'm going to take my clips tool here, click down, hold shift, and it makes it, you know, a perfect circle, which is wonderful. I guess the bigger would be, oops, don't worry, let's redo that. Hold it down, hold down shift, and now we got a perfect circle. We we'll go to our mask here, we'll feather it so it's not all perfect. We want to kind of make it look like a light or something. We we'll go shrink down mask expansion. And transformation, we're going to go ahead and scale it down some. Now, hit V to get your pointing tool back. Get your pan behind. Move the anchor point closer to the middle. That was my, uh, that was my fault. I didn't do that first. Should have. Now, V to go back to your pointer tool. Let's, uh, let's, let's play with it a little bit. 
add. Uh, that looks kind of cool. Kind of looks like a laser pointer or something. And now we're going to use the lasso and parent that to the null one. Oh. <clears throat> going to see if it's. That did not work. Oh, derp. Okay. There we go. So now I have that weird red light on the tip of my finger. It's not staying consistent, but it's fine. Okay, so now Command M if you're finished. Go to your QuickTime thing right here. We have a settings mismatch. That's fine. We go mix the format will be QuickTime. That ensures that it'll be an MOV. See video codec. We want to do an H.264 compression. That's the most common and probably the best so far. So we're going to go ahead and use that. Okay. Now, output, shadow test. This is going to be the place where you want to decide where you want to save it. So we'll go ahead and save this as shadow test render two. So I know where it is. It's going to be in this folder here. Save it, render it. It's going to take a few seconds for it to do its thing. And now we're done. I hope this helped. And uh, thank you for watching.